What's up, everyone? I'm going to be reacting to a clip of Richard Feynman talking about magnets. I've seen this before. I just wanted to kind of walk through my interpretation as we go. If you get hold of two magnets and you push them, you can feel this pushing between them. Turn it around the other way and, it, and they slam together. Now, what is it, the feeling between those two magnets? What do you mean, what's the feeling between well, the two th magnets? There's something when you're there, isn't there? I mean, that, the sensation is that there's something there when you push these two magnets together. Listen to my question. What is the meaning? He's saying there's something that, so this the question, the interviewer is uh he's saying well there's something there and then notice he says sensation is that there's something there when you push these two magnets together listen to my question what is the mean listen to my question so he's like he's uh, he's basically redirecting the as we fought as we go through this um, my my claim <laughs> is going to essentially be that he doesn't have an answer to the question. And so he's redirecting in part uh, the lack of understanding on basically the ignorance of the interviewer rather than that he just doesn't have an answer for how magnets work. Because the guy's like, you put two magnets together, it's like something's there, something's going on, what is it? When you say that there's, that there's a feeling, of course you feel it, now what do you want to know? What I want to know is what's going on. Exactly. The magnets Between these two... Each. Good question. What's going on? Bits, these two bits of metal. Magnets repel each other. And, well then, what does that... Repel each other. But why? What's going on? That doesn't answer what's going on. But what does that mean? Or why are they doing that? Or how are they doing it? Uh, you're asking... I, I, I must say, I think that's a perfectly... Now he's like, shit, I don't have an answer. <laughs> Mind you, Feynman's like one of the greatest physicists in modern history. Uh, and this is just, this is just representative of that we don't have an answer. So it's not like it's just him. It's just we don't have an answer to this simple question of what the hell, what is happening? The reasonable question. Of course it's ask. a reason. It's an excellent question. Okay. Uh, the, but the problem that you're asking, you see, when you ask why something happens, how does a person answer why something happens? For example... Notice he's not answering the question. He's not like, this is what's happening. He's like, well, the problem with the question is... And then he's going to go into this huge, like, elaborate response where he just doesn't provide an answer. Aunt Minnie is in a hospital. Why? Because she slipped, she went out and she slipped on the ice and broke her hip. That satisfies it, people. It satisfies, but it wouldn't satisfy someone who came from another planet and knew nothing about things. You first you understand why, when you break your hip, do you go to the hospital? How do you get to the hospital with the, when the hip was broken? Well, because her husband, seeing that she had the hip was broken, called the hospital up and sent somebody to get her. All that is understood by people. Now, when you explain a, a why, you have to be in some framework that you allow something to be true. Otherwise, you're perpetually asking why. Why did the husband call up the hospital? Because husband is interested in his wife's welfare. Not always. Some husbands aren't interested in their wife's welfare when they're drunk. Notice what he just said. You, when you're perpetually asking why. So you ha there has to be some framework, is what he's saying. There, there has to be some circumstance where there, it just is, is what he's getting at. He's just basically saying magnetism, it just is. There's no explanation for why it happens. It just is. And they're angry. 
And so you begin to get a very interesting understanding of the world and all its complications. And in order to, to, if you try to follow anything up, you go deeper and deeper in various directions. If, for example, you could go, well, why did she slip on the ice? Well, ice is slippery. Everybody knows that, no problem. But you ask, why is ice slippery? That's kind of curious. Ice is extremely slippery. It's very interesting. You say, how does it work? You could, you see, so you could either say, I'm satisfied that you've answered me, ice is slippery, that explains it, or you could go on and say, why is ice slippery? And then you're involved with something, because there aren't many things as slippery as ice. It's very hard to get. Greasy stuff, but that's sort of wet and slimy. But a solid that's so slippery? Because it is in the case of ice that when you stand on it, they say, momentarily the pressure melts the ice a little bit, so you got a sort of instantaneous water surface on which you're slipping. Why on ice and not on other things? Because ice expands when it, water expands when it freezes, so the pressure tries to undo the expansion and melts it. It's capable of melting it. But other substances contract when they're freezing, and when you push them, they're just as satisfied to be solid. Why does water expand when it freezes and other substances don't expand when they freeze? All right? I'm, I'm not answering your question, but I'm but telling you how difficult a why question is. You have to know what it is that you're permitted to understand and allow to be understood and known permitted and what it is you're not. You'll notice in this example that the more I ask... Permitted, allowed, and what you're not allowed to know. Why... It gets interesting after all. That's my idea that the deeper a thing is, the more interesting it is. And uh, we could even go further and say, why did she fall down when she slipped? That has to do with gravity and involves in all the planets and everything else. Never mind. It goes on and on. Now, when you ask, for example, why two magnets repel, there are many different levels. It depends on whether you're a student of physics or an ordinary person who doesn't know anything or not. If you're somebody who doesn't know anything at all about it, all I can say is that there's a magnetic force that makes them repel and that you're feeling that force. And you say, but well, that's very strange because I don't feel kind of force like that in other circumstances. When you turn them the other way, they attract. There's a very analogous force, electrical force, which is the same kind of a question. And you say, that's also very weird. But you're not at all disturbed by the fact that when you put your hand on the chair, it pushes you back. But we found out by looking at it that that's the same force as a matter of fact, the electrical force, not magnetic exactly in that case, but it's the same electrical repulsions that are involved in keeping your finger away from the chair because everything's made out of its electrical forces in minor and microscopic details. There's other forces involved, but this is, is connected to electrical forces. It turns out that the magnetic and the electric force with which I wish to explain these things, this, this repulsion in the first place, is what ultimately is the deeper thing that we have to start, that we can start with, to explain many other things that looked like they were, everybody would just accept them. You know, you can't put your hand through the chair. That's taken for granted. But that you can't put... He just said it's fundamental, basically. Ultimately, it's the deeper thing. It's, it is that which gives rise to other things. And so there is no explanation for it. It just is, is what he's essentially getting at. Put your hand through the chair when looked at more closely. Why? It involves these same repulsive forces that appear in magnets. The situation you then have to explain is why in magnets it goes over a bigger distance than it ordinarily. And there it has to do with the fact that in iron, all the electrons are spinning in the same direction. They all get lined up, and they magnify the effect of the force until it's large enough at a distance that you can feel it. But it's a force which is present all the time and very common and is in a basic force of almost. Basic. I mean, I can go a little further back if I were more technical. But at an early level, I just have to, have to tell you that's going to be one of the things you'll just have to take as an element in the world, the existence of magnetic repulsion or electrical, or electrical attraction, magnetic attraction. Take as an element in the world. Bas again, fundamental. I can't explain that attraction in terms of anything else that's familiar to you. For example, if we say the magnets attract like as if they were connected by rubber bands, I would be cheating you because they're not connected by rubber bands. I shouldn't be in trouble. You'd soon ask me about the nature of the bands. And secondly, 
If you were curious enough, you'd ask me why rubber bands tend to pull back together again, and I would end up explaining that in terms of electrical forces, which are the very things that I'm trying to use the rubber bands to explain, so I have cheated very badly, you see. So I'm not going to be able to give you an answer to why magnets attract each other, except to tell you that they do, and to tell you that that's one of the elements in the world of different kinds of forces. There are electrical forces, magnetic forces, gravitational forces, and others, and those are some of the parts. If you were a student, you'd go fur I could go further. I could tell you that the magnetic forces are related to the electrical forces very intimately that our relationship between the gravity forces and electrical forces remains unknown, and so on. But I really can't do a good job, any job, of explaining magnetic force in terms of something else that you're more familiar with, because I don't understand it in terms of anything else that you're more familiar with. And that's just the case for science as it is today. And I appreciate that he was just honest at the end there. <laughs> Not to rag on him. <laughs> Fuck, I'm such an asshole. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> that's the thing, though, is it is explainable with something else you're familiar with, and that thing is gravity. And so, because of the infinite nature of the universe, there are... Uh, basically smaller and smaller and smaller particles that are more and more abundant. The smaller they are, the more abundant they are. And they basically form a sea of particles called the ether. And these particles then gravitationally interact with other systems. So like a iron nucleus and... Uh, basically get pulled into a figure eight orbital where they pass through the center of gravity and continue on, which means that a force, even though gravity is also emergent, but gravity is simpler than, than the other forces because it, it itself causes the others and specifically magnetism, especially is most apparent. And, uh, so it causes a figure eight orbital, which then means that there's both a pull section, an inlet and an outlet. And the inlet functions as one pole and the outlet functions as the other pole of the magnet. And so when there's many atoms, like he's saying, spinning and spin is related. If they're not spinning, they're not pulling the ether into them in this way and the more they spin the more they pull the ether into them and so the spin is a vital aspect of magnetism like the difference between earth's magnetic field and venus's where the planets are very similar and we think well it's something to do with the core of the planets that makes it that venus doesn't have a detectable magnetic field but the reality is is that it's not spinning and so it's not causing this vortex of the ether around it to flow in a figure eight field gravitationally because without the spin it's too symmetrical and so particles that pass through just continue along their trajectory and don't get def deflected back and so basically a detectable a detectable magnetic field does not arise but the spin causes it to arise like on earth <clears throat> and so there is an explanation for how, how magnetic fields are caused that is that is within uh something else we're familiar with which is gravity because gravity causes magnetic fields so i just wanted to point out this video because it's very representative of the current knowledge in science and how we just simply when we really are faced with the question how do magnets work like this like the interviewer asked in in this then we just don't have an answer i mean we can do like he did and kind of talk around it you know and that's what we do <laughs>
But the reality is when push comes to shove, we just don't have an answer. And uh, I do. And I've presented it many times. And here I go again, just kind of once again, that's how it is. Magnetic fields are caused by gravity, by particles moving in a figure eight orbital that pass through the object they orbit. Like neutrinos passing through the Earth. Alright, well that's that. Peace guys.